Hammond is a huge hire for an already successful Aces team loaded with star talent. Becky has already made a name for herself, not only as a player in the WNBA, but as an assistant coach for the Spurs. For us to be able to grab her and get her at this time is huge for the W. She is what we are all striving and wanting to be, not only as a front office, but as the Aces. She represents a hard work, she represents dedication, she represents a love for the game, she represents family. And so to be able to have one of your own, and, and one of our own who actually played for the franchise, to lead us into a new era, the next 25 years, what does that look like? She's going to catapult the visibility of the league even more. So today, be a pro. You owe it to each other to do these things every day. I'll also add, nothing is promised. If you don't do these things, this never happens. Leadership is about relationships. Myself as a leader, I have no standing to be able to take out a transaction if I haven't put a lot of investment into it, especially time investment, knowledge, sharing, teaching, those kind of investments into their lives. I, I don't get to make a withdrawal. I want to give the players some structure, um, but I want them to play free. I want them to be who they are. I want to be able to give them clear objectives and then I think I have a base level to hold people accountable. You have to snake this back out here to come and get hurt. When you can do that, you can cultivate a really special culture. This area is yours to go beast mode on somebody. She's got the right combination of, you know, a smile on her face, but also means business. They're gonna feel that work side of me and that drive and that passion, but also you have to have a sense of humor in this job. You can't take yourself too seriously. It's like at the end of the day, we put a ball in a hole. There's so much more serious things going on in the world, but what is very serious is the leadership roles that these women carry out back into their families, back into their communities. It's one of the things that we've talked about and preached the most as a staff is just giving, give. And that's been our motto. You can't outgive life and you can't outgive the game, so give everything because you'll get so much more than you, you could ever imagine back. I tell you this every day, everything we need, we already have in this room. Yeah. 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 Growing up in South Dakota, we were just a really active family. My dad always played on like church league teams or city league teams and I was just a tag along and basketball was something that you could get really good at by yourself. You just need a ball and a hoop. We lived in the Black Hills. It couldn't have been a better place to grow up as a kid. Our backyard, there was 25,000 acres of public land, hills and rivers. Matt and Becky would just take off on three-wheelers and ride through the woods all day. And they put a slab of concrete down there, and um, that's where I went to war. And it wasn't playing against neighborhood kids, it was my family. My brother played, my dad played, and then typically one of my brother's friends. Her dad and the two boys and her would play two-on-two -two for hours in front of the house. So that's really kind of where she got her trick shots and her, all the things she had to do because the boys had no mercy on her. Believe me, they wanted to block her shots. They were not gonna let her score if they had anything to say about it. So she got to where she could put those spins on it and she could go around them. And it was fun to watch. It was never like work for me, I, cause I loved it so much. You know, I was just a junkie for basketball. She had to drive always to be better, always to be improved. And then she was very coachable. And then she got opportunities. I go where I'm really wanted. In Colorado State's coaching staff saw something special in me, and I was their number one focus. And you know, they were a 500 team probably then, but they got myself, they got another really great player, Katie Cronin out of Colorado. I arrived as freshman. As she said, I can remember walking through uh, Moby Arena, and at that time, the girls program was drawing 1,100, 1,200 and both of them saying, someday we're gonna fill this place. It's about building something special, but you do need that diamond in the rough. And it slices to the right, and a foul. She's not gonna bow down to anybody. Yes, there's my desire to be the best that I could be as a player, and competitive, and wanna win, and then there was the people that were like, you're the only one, we have to have you. Pretty soon they were on the map, breaking the top 25, and she was the player of the year. 
I came out in 99 when the ABL folded. So it was a tough draft coming out of college, but there were college players taken. I just wasn't one of them. She realized that this was the best league in the world with the best athletes in the world. And when she graduated, she was a walk-on, um, a training camp player. Now I know that we have about 100 and I guess 60 folks here today. Um, all of you will not make the squad. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to make the team. I didn't know they had zero intentions of keeping me. I didn't know that. So every day what I did know is there's only a certain amount of spots and that my approach was not today. I'm going to make it impossible for you to cut me today. Johnson, her pull-up shot. Good. Vicky, one of her best friends ever, and Teresa Witherspoon were on that team. So they had two guards that were all NBA caliber, and the general manager kept saying to the coach every day, when are you going to cut her? Finally, after a week, Richie Adubato said, I will cut her when she misses a shot. To be honest, I didn't know her name or anything. I, didn't, I just said the little white girl. I, I love the little white girl because she was tough. I hit her a couple of times, knocked her down, and she got back up. I was showing up, I was doing the work, I was getting knocked down, not saying a word, just going about my business um, and trying to do the best that I could every day. On the last day of training camp, Teresa Weatherspoon walked in and Becky was not there. And she went into management and said, you should not have cut that little girl. She is good enough to play in this league. You should not have cut her and said, no, she just had a dentist appointment today. And down the lane, Becky spin and in. My talent is not what got me to the WNBA. In here is what got me a 16-year career. In here is what got me a 16-year career. At my height, not being drafted, being the slowest player on the court probably every night, I had to do it different. It's not about what people say. It's about what she, she brings to the table. The way she worked um, day in and day out, uh, she didn't want to just be given anything. She wanted to work for everything. Becky Hammond for three. She adapted and she learned to play. And at the beginning of the season, she's only coming in for three or four minutes every game, four or five minutes. The middle of the season, she's getting 10 minutes a game. But by the end of the season in playoffs, she was getting 20 minutes, and when the game was on the line, she was in the lineup. Hammond takes it to the line. What a move! But she's been doing that all postseason. She was so crafty, just being very creative with her shots, and I always wondered, like, how is she able to do that? And, you know, you watch her go in, you're like, oh boy, this is going to be a block, and then she would just get her shot off. So I think she developed this craft about her, and it made her into who she was. She is one of uh, the best that's played in our league. And when you look at what Beck's able to do out there in the court, so many young girls will see that and really believe that they're capable of greatness too. Becky had been such a powerful name in the game. And for her to come to the program, it changed everything. She brought so much attention to the program, and not only attention in, um, from a fan perspective, but because she was such a good player. You look at her skill set, whether it's her ability to knock down the three with deep range, she's so crafty at finishing at different angles around the basket. The love for the game, um, the love to win, uh, and the love to sacrifice for the team. In that first year, lost to Phoenix in the Western Conference Finals, and then the following year, lost to Detroit in the Finals. And so just a really intense growth curve once we were able to put the right pieces together. Good job! We went from going out to tell the, tell the fans, hey, there's a team in San Antonio, you should probably come to the game, to where we had sold our crowd. Becky, out to Sophia, she did it! Wow. Okay. She was so passionate about the game, she always put in the work, and that's what separated her to keep her in the league for so long. Becky Hammond is the engine that drives San Antonio. I feel like Becky always had the impact of, hey, that was a damn good screen, or, you know, you got me that shot. It's not something that shows up in the stat sheet. So to have a teammate recognize that and kind of make you feel validated, like, yeah, my minutes are helping the team, it was a good feeling. That's the tenacity I'm talking yeah. about. We get every loose ball. Come on. 
she's a unique story because you have someone who's been drafted as the number one pick and doesn't survive in the league and to somebody who was undrafted and became an all-star in the league. Becky did that. Make somebody else take a jump shot. All right, here we go. We benefited in a huge way of having a coach on the floor. Yeah, she's going to get in your face at times, and other times she's going to push you along, but she could reach player 1 through 12. I didn't have the, the long leash, the athleticism, to not know a scouting report. I had to know all of our schemes. I had to know all the personnel because I needed to have every advantage mentally and preparation-wise that could help make up for my lack of athleticism. Other people can dominate the game with their jumping, with their physical force. I had to dominate the game by playing chess. Somebody who can run the show with such a high IQ, a great communicator, gets you organized, gets everyone in the spots to be successful. You knew early on she was gonna be an exceptional coach. Groundbreaking night for the NBA as Becky Hammond makes her debut as a full-time assistant coach for the Spurs the first woman to hold a full-time coaching position in league history. The NBA has been around a lot longer than the WNBA. So, you know, we're still kind of young in this, in this evolution. So we are following what the men have done in the past. And then you have great coaches like Greg Popovich that really opened the door for Becky in the NBA and not just in the NBA, but you know, on the professional level. He had been watching and observing me um, in his city uh, for the previous eight years. And so that's part of the, the approach that, you know, if you're talking about young players, getting out in your community because you don't know what eyes are watching you. I think he just started the narrative of a good coach and just got rid of pronouns. Intelligence, intuitive feel for the game, and a work ethic, an ability to teach. It's no different because she's a woman. She has to have the same qualities that all these guys have coaching, and she has them. Don't get too cute out here. Stay serious, stay focused. You know, they just changed a lot of perceptions of the boxes that people put other people in. That was a good test. You got through that. I think confidence-wise, you'd be okay. Yeah. First two years in San Antonio with the Spurs, uh, I used to go into training camp and watch her, and she was real quiet. And then the third year, she became more outspoken, and she spoke about defense. Way to close. Now we got some energy. Let's go. Keep it Made up. me very proud because she's an offensive player. Yeah, she's been wonderful. Just got used to her, you know, doing what she does. Uh, she's so gifted and so passionate just to bounce things off of her, to hear her ideas, to experience her competitiveness. Right here. You know, the guys respect her so much. Looks like Becky Hammond's going to walk away from her first head coaching experience with a championship trophy. I always love seeing little girls with my jersey on. But what has always moved me is seeing the little boys because those minds matter just as much. Because we're talking about generational mindsets. If we want to change society, we have to change it generationally. And this next generation is seeing women in ways that the previous generations have not. When my little boys see me, I'm mom first, but I'm a coach. It's a guard and you can just push her out, it's fine. But... And I've coached men and I've coached women, and they just see me as a leader. Defensive player of the year, I'm not kidding you. I already, I already told them that. <laughs> it's not easy being the first to do anything, and I recognize that it was incredibly difficult for Beck in, in a lot of ways to be one of those trailblazers. But wow, what a path she has made for so many women that have come after her. And now you see the impact of that, not just in San Antonio and the lives she was able to impact there, but across the league, just about every team has uh, female representation on their coaching staff or front office, uh, and that just speaks to the growth of, of the game, and, and Becky's been a huge part of that. There you go. Jump. To honor the legacy and impact that Becky has had and will forever have on this WNBA franchise, we unveil Becky's number 25. They flew me and my family out here and retired my jersey, and the forward thinking of, we want to start building a legacy. And this is where this legacy begins. The Becky Hammond era has gotten off 
to a fantastic start in Las Vegas. And being the first to be compensated as what we would call the million dollar woman lets everybody know that the W, we're just as committed to winning on and off the basketball court, but we also got to win with how we treat people. It was sad, it was emotional, it was excitement for her. I told her, you know, through the ups and downs, just enjoy the journey. This is just another chapter in your book. In the career that she's chosen, she's in the top one-tenth of a percent. That's how legends are made. We are going to honor some of the greatest 25 players in the history of the WNBA. Success happens when you do all these little steps. You just pound patiently every day and build and build and build. And then winning will take care of itself. I got a lot of weapons on this team. Sometimes it's confusing even for me. Like, who am I going to go to? I have 50 million options. But let me figure that out. You guys just be who you are and always play the right way. That's how we're going to win a championship and that's how we're going to become great. Because we'll do it together. When you see the person that you love have a dream, you want to do everything that you can to support that dream. And I'm just so happy and proud to see it all and witness it all and now see her fulfill her dream of being a head coach. What she has done to this already good team, but then elevated them to that next level of offense. You don't care who is out there, that's your job, okay? Be there for each other. Here we go. And a pass from Plum, Hamby finishes it all. She's a blessing. She's a beautiful person, inside and out. And that for us is more important. She's a caring, loving, giving person, and that to us is being successful.